Today we will illustrate the preparation of a mandibular right second primary molar to receive a chrome steel crown. Various entities of the primary and newly erupted teeth will again come into play here. For instance, if you will recall that the primary tooth is broad cervically and constricted occlusally, this means a minimal occlusal reduction will be necessary and the broad undercut cervical area will serve for retention of the modern shaped crown. As we view the slides and as you are working in the laboratory, keep in mind that this crown is pre-formed and cervically pre-festooned and is much different from a cast gold crown. In this restoration, the preparation will be cut to fit the pre-formed modern crown, whereas in cast gold crowns, the casting is made to fit the preparation. If we could go to the first slide. This is the uh, armamentarium we will be using today. This is a one-half DT diamond burr. This is the chrome steel crown that we will be placing in the clinic onto this preparation. We will not be doing this in the lab. We will only be cutting the preparation. This is a tooth we'll, we will prepare today. Notice the occlusal convergence of the buccal and lingual surfaces. The prominent occlusal anatomy, anatomy will require a minimal occlusal reduction and hence add to retentive factors of this preparation. This is an occlusal view of our molar showing the slight occlusal convergence of our first proximal slices. The amount taken off the mesial distal is just enough to pass a sickle explorer, as this slide shows. This slide shows the lingual convergence of the proximal slices. From the lingual, the size of the slice and their orientation are quite evident. The next step in our preparation is the occlusal reduction. Approximately one millimeter of this surface is removed so that you have one millimeter clearance with the occlusal surface of the occluding tooth. This reduction is done with the number one half DT diamond and the finished occlusal contour should resemble the pre-preparation occlusal surface except for the fact that it will be slightly more flattened. The buccal and lingual surfaces are usually not reduced due to their inherent convergence towards one another. In the case of this slide, nothing more than a removal of the darker contrasting surface color has been done. Your teeth in the lab will be all one color and artistic desires will not require you to reduce the buccal and lingual surfaces. However, if the particular tooth that you are preparing in a clinical situation has a larger and distinct buccal protuberance, it may be necessary to reduce it slightly on the buckle. Here's the finished preparation contrasted with the uncut tooth. Notice the reduction, the margins the s are smooth and definite. The orientation of the mesial distal and buccal lingual convergent towards the occlusal and the rounded contour of the occlusal surface. These next two slides are simply different views of the finished preparation as it would appear in the arch. Your occluded final preparation should look like this. One millimeter reduction on the occlusal and sufficient mesiodistal reduction. Remember, enough to pass an explorer. This slide is a bite wing radiograph of a chrome steel crown on both the maxillary and mandibular second primary molars. Note that both crowns are well contoured and the margins fit flush with the proximal slices. They maintain mesial distal space, proper occlusal height, and will serve the patient quite well.
Thank you.